So in the next three days, we'll be mainly covering some recording questions from SPR. Okay. So along with the questions, I will be covering the main concepts and, and the required type of knowledge that will get you prepared for the paper SPR. Okay. So today we'll be beginning with, beginning with the group related questions. So we know that one of the main questions in SPR, that is question number one, is group and it is worth 30 marks and it will be well and good if you can have a better start with the group question, right? When it comes to the group area or the consolidated areas in SPR, we know that it is around four different sections we have to cover. And sections are, first one is the knowledge part regarding the basic groups, okay? And I can say that literally it's a knowledge which is going to get carry forward from F of, okay? So what are the different, what are all different adjustments that you are going to learn in basic groups or that you have already learned in your class in basic groups area is pretty much you are aware about these adjustments from FR itself. Okay. So from basic groups, the type of requirement, the requirements that you are going to get from this area is about goodwill calculation. So they will be asking you to calculate the goodwill. Okay. So goodwill calculation under both methods, you should be aware about the goodwill calculation under both methods. What are the two different types of goodwill calculation approaches we have? Can anyone please name it? Proportional return and fair value. Yeah, we have got full goodwill approach. Yeah, full goodwill approach. And what the other one? Proportionate. Proportionate approach. Or in a way, we can say that it's a partial good luck. Okay. So that's the first thing that you have to learn with respect to the basic group structure. And we have seen that there are many, plenty of times in which in, in the papers, they have tested the goodwill calculations. And we can give more importance to partial goodwill approach. So obviously, they are going to test something on the partial goodwill approach basis. Okay. Another knowledge area we have to cover from basic groups is about impairment, goodwill impairment. And in most of the cases, when they have tested this goodwill impairment, they have tested it based on partial goodwill approach. So we know that there are some adjustments we have to aware about. We have to be aware about when it comes to impairment of partial goodwill approach. So we have to be very much careful about this part. Okay. So this is the first and foremost area you have to cover in goodwill calculation, fine? So first of all, we'll have a rough look at how to do the goodwill calculation and we'll do some questions as well to get a practice on that same thing, fine? So can you see the Excel here? Can you see the Google sheet? Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. So how do you calculate a goodwill? The goodwill will be calculated as per the standard IFRS 3. So whenever you are writing an answer, compared to F4, we know that we have we need to have an explanatory note on the same. So when you are explaining the goodwill calculation, we should always score the standard IFRS 3. Okay. The goodwill is mainly calculated on the base of IFRS 3. So we have to mention the standard IFRS 3. Fine. So as per IFRS 3, goodwill is calculated in the following basis. There is consideration transferred by parent. That will include cash. It can be cash or share exchange or exchange of share options. Okay. Or a deferred consideration. Fine. Then what are the other different ways of transferring the consideration amount? Yes. Uh, apart from the deferred consideration, have you heard about any other type of considerations? Yes, there is something known as contingent consideration, right? There is contingent consideration as well. So, how will you deal with contingent consideration? How will you deal with contingent consideration? Do we need to include it by calculating the goodwill? Will we include it while calculating the Goodwill, the contingent consideration. Yes, right. So almost what all this, what all these figures which is given here, 
all these figures have to be included while calculating the contribution. So now the question is at what value we have to consider this amount. So cash, we know that the cash is exactly the amount that you paid today. The value won't change. So it's equivalent to what the amount that you paid. The same way exchange, fair value of shares also should be measured at the fair value at the acquisition date. Okay, we'll measure it. We'll measure this particular component based on the fair value of shares of parent company. Okay, fair value of shares of parent company at the acquisition date. And what about exchange of share options? That is something that you have studied in SPR, that is respect to IMRS. So there are situations in which we'll offer the share options to employees of the subsidiary company, or we may take over the share option scheme of subsidiary company. So it is mandatory that as per IFRS 3, any such obligations that you have taken from subsidiary on the basis of share options or any such share options that is issued to the directors of subsidiary company or the shareholders of subsidiary company should be calculated as per IFRS 2. Okay. Now, deferred consideration. Deferred consideration means we are offering a consideration, but you will be get paid in the future. So we need to consider the present value of that future payment. But for sure, you will pay it. So there is no confusion with regards to whether to consider that amount or not. The only difference is, instead of considering the exact amount that you are going to pay in the future, since there is a timing difference, we need to calculate the present value. Fine. The same way, contingent consideration is almost similar to deferred consideration. The only difference that you have to find is contingent consideration will be paid on certain conditions. Okay. So if you meet that condition, then only they will pay it. The parent will pay a certain amount to subsidiary, but based on certain conditions. So here, the difference is whether you will meet those conditions or not, we are not actually certain about it. Right? So how will you consider that value? How to include this value to the goodwill calculation? We'll take the present value of future payment. Here we will consider the present value of future payment. But we won't take the whole amount. We won't take the whole amount. Instead, we'll take the expected value. We'll, can, we'll consider the expected value. We'll consider the expected value of that future payment. On that expected value basis, we are going to calculate the contingent consideration. So how will you calculate expected value? They will give a certain percentage of meeting those conditions. So the present value of that future payment will be considered, but that present value will get multiplied with the percentage of meeting, the, meeting those conditions. So this is how we'll calculate the consideration transferred by parent. Is that clear, everyone? So apart from that, we will add the non-controlling interest because there are instances in which the parent company won't be considering the all shares in our figures. NCA will be calculated because parent won't be acquiring the 100% shares of subsidiary company, right? So in that scenario, we have to calculate NCA. So NCA will be calculated on either fair value basis or proportionate basis. So here NCA will be calculated either on the fair value basis or proportionate. So fair value means it is calculated as per the fair value of the three share price at acquisition. So the fair value will be calculated according to which knowledge as per the fair value of sub three share price at the acquisition. That's how we'll measure the fair value of So once you get that fair value, now I will compare that with fair value of net asset set. Compare it with fair value of net asset at acquisition. Okay. So that's how we'll get the good bill. Is that clear, everyone? It will be either a positive good bill or there are instances in which it will become a negative good bill as well. So how will you account for it? If it's a negative goodwill, how will you account for it? We'll account thus gain on bargain purchase. Okay. If the consideration that you are transferring is less than the fair value of our subsidiary, 
so we'll consider it as a gain and we'll account it as gain on bargain okay is that clear everyone can i reply in the chat this is the first knowledge part we have to cover with respect to basic group structure so we have covered that so i just roughly revised it so any doubts on this part any doubts we'll show the gain on bargain purchase in the p and l in the consolidated p and l as well as in the equity side of more consolidated so under the group retain earnings is that clear of law so in the p and l it will be shown in the other gains and in sofp we will include it with the retainings of our group right perfect so we'll do one question that will help us to apply our knowledge with respect to this goodwill calculation so we'll be covering almost every questions from the past paper starting from 2018 okay i will be covering all group related questions today that where we have to apply our knowledge but obviously we know that there is a time constraint so i'll be just discussing it okay i'll just roughly discuss how to do those calculations <coughs> there won't be enough time for me to calculate everything so can i just read this requirement what is the requirement here so it's a question from september 2018 So from September 2023, we know that there is a change going to happen. So what's the main change, guys? The main change is they will be giving you a pre-populated FS. That is, this drafted FS will be given to you after calculating the goodwill. Here it is mentioned as 47. Okay. So this is according to their calculation. Okay. Here it is mentioned as 47 here. So we need to recalculate the goodwill and give the act amount. Okay, so this is how an FS will be given for you in the exam. So we need to recalculate those figures and include it along with this FS. Are you getting it? That's the main difference going to happen from SPR from September 2023. The main objective is earlier, even when there is a change happening from P2 to SPR, the examiner mainly used to test on certain aspects or certain extracts. Ah. So only learn to calculate goodwill. They don't know where to post it in the financial statement. So in order to avoid that bridge, so who is lacking that knowledge that what will be the impact of these figures of these final figures in their first for their better knowledge, they are change the style of the exam. So apart from that, nothing have changed in SPR. Okay, so they will give a efforts like this, but we have to correct those efforts and wherever which is required. Okay. and all other knowledge areas will be the same there is no change in the standard there is no change in the presentation of your calculation everything will be same the only thing you have to do is just complete that pre populated fs is that clear everyone fine so just read the requirement here errors have been seen with respect to goodwill calculation so we have to explain those errors and calculate the profit or disposal of strawberry that's another company and explain the correct accounting treatment of bonds in the year under 30 june 2 strike sir now i am only focusing on the goodwill calculation because now that's what we have learned in our knowledge okay so again using the pre populated spreadsheet response option in part a adjust the spreadsheet prepared by finance director in order to prepare complete consolidated fs as on 31st june that should account of acquisition of grape retain investment of strawberry and the bonds so what all adjustments that you have done here that needs to get posted here in the pre populated fs so shall we calculate the goodwill here shall we calculate the goodwill in this situation <laughs> so just take out the revision it okay so in the revision it just look at the question number 10 in the latest kaplan kit just look at question number 10 so can you see the question guys 
just read it the background and exhibit number one the background and exhibit number one with respect to acquisition of grade okay it's a question from 2018 so that will help you to understand the knowledge of goodwill calculation then you will get an idea that how that part is getting tested in the paper can you reply in the chat can you see the question guys the screen is visible right yeah just go through it quick quickly just go through it so the requirement is to calculate the goodwill and find the errors in calculating the goodwill okay so do it fast Is that done, everyone? Fine. So with respect to acquisition of grape, they have said that banana have acquired almost 80 percent in grape. So obviously there will be a NCA because the 20 percent is with NCA, the non-controlling interest. So they have given the FS related extract of a subsidiary that is equity, retained earnings, uh, and other components of equity. So obviously that is will be helping us to find the net asset calculation, right? So basically net asset means the equity side of our subsidiary that is given here, which is 20, 42 and 8. Okay. Apart from that, they have given certain other information. So in the purchase consideration of this parent, which comprises of 10 million banana, banana shares, which had a nominal value of 1 and market price is 6.8. So how that information is going to help us? We know that there is a consideration transferred. It is in the form of cash or shares. It is in the form of cash or shares. How they have given the consideration, guys? Is it in the form of cash or shares? Obviously, it is in the form of shares. So we need to find the fair value of that share exchange. And as it is given here, as we have already discussed, how will you find the fair value of share exchange? Fair value of shares of P company at acquisition. So we will calculate it as per the fair value of a parent company share price. So here they have given the fair value of parents company share price is 6.8 and they have transferred 10 million shares. So 10 into 6.8, how much it will be? 10 into 6.8. 60 million. 68, no? 10 uh -huh. into 6.8 will be 68 million. So they have calculated it correctly. They have given the extra here. So the figure they have taken for share consideration is perfectly right. Isn't it? Sounds good. Shall we move to the next line? All of you, is it clear everyone how to find the fair value of share exchange? It is the fair value of share price at the date of acquisition of the parent company multiplied by the number of shares. And they have exactly calculated it correct because that's why it's going to be 68 million cents. And additionally, apart from that, additionally, a cash of 80 million was due on 30 June 2007, X9. So there's a timing difference, isn't it? Because the acquisition date is 30 June 2007, X7, and this cash payment is going to happen on 30 June 2007, X9. So is, yes. it, is it a kind of a deferred payment? Future payment, deferred uh, consideration. Future payment, but it is based on certain conditions. So if net profit after tax of grape grew by 
five percentage in each of the next two years, then we are ready to pay that extra consideration of 18 million as cash. So what type of consideration is this? Is it contingent consideration or contingent consideration? Contingent. It's contingent, mm. right? So when it's contingent, we cannot take the percent value directly. Instead, we need to calculate the expected value of that amount. Mm. So here, if you look at the question, they have given the present value of total consideration at 2 sorry, x7. At the equation date, the present value is already given for you in the question. How much it is the present value? How much it is? 16 million. 16 million. But can I take the same amount for the goodwill calculation? Mm -hmm. No. We need to find the no. expected value on the base of how much percentage of chances is there to meet that working condition. Because they have given a condition here. That's a contingent consideration, which is 5 percentage. Profit should be achieved. Okay. And that should be growing in the next two years. And it was felt that there was 25 percentage chance of profit targets being met. There is a chance of 25 percentage that the profit targets will be met. So how will you calculate the fair value of this consideration? It will be 16 million multiplied by 16 multiplied by 25 percentage. Isn't it? So how much will be your fair value of that consideration? The fair value of consideration is exactly right. Very good. It's 4 million. It's 4 million. So have they included it? Have they included it in the goodwill calculation here? Have they included it along with the goodwill calculation? No. So we'll add it, right? So we'll add it. So earlier, we just need to add it for the to find the goodwill calculation. But now as a student, we have to fill our pre-populated consolidated efforts as well. So when you make that additional adjustment of 4 million, you should understand that we have to know the impact of this entry in your efforts in your consolidated financial statements. Okay. So tell me, where will you show this amount in your SOFP? So I know that a portion will go in the form of goodwill. Okay. So debit goodwill. This amount will go to goodwill account. Huh? That's the one side of this entry. What about the credit side? What about the credit side? Is it a liability? Yes. XID is a liability, right? So when you are filling your pre popular efforts, it should be given under your liabilities. Under the liabilities, we have to consider this contingent consideration because it's an obligation that you have to pay to the or already exist previous shareholders of a subsidiary company. Is it clear, everyone? Can I reply it in the chat? Okay. So this is a change that is going to happen in SBR. So what are the adjustments that you are going to make here? Immediately, that should struck in your mind how that should be posted or get reflected in your efforts. Okay. So do, do it then and there itself. Otherwise, you will forget it at the end of the question. Fine. Now, apart from this adjustment, at acquisition, the only adjustment required to identifiable net assets of grape was a land which had a fair value of 5 million higher than its carrying amount. This is not included within the 7 million equity of grape. So what does it mean by that sentence? The net asset of our company, that is subsidiary company, is supposed to be 70 million according to their efforts. But they have said that there is an adjustment to it. There is a small adjustment to it. How much is the adjustment? 5 million. We need to adjust 5 million. How will you adjust it? So instead of considering it as 70 million, the net asset should be increased by? 5. 5. Right? So I know that there should be an increase of 5 million here in the net asset calculation and obviously that impact will happen on the goodwill as well. But tell me guys, what will be the impact on this FS of this net asset adjustment? Assets in so it. Adjust the goodwill and apart from that, we need to adjust it in our PP as well. Isn't it? And since it's a non-depreciable item because it's a land, so the carrying value of this adjustment will remain the same. Suppose if it was a building or any sort of other depreciable item, obviously from the acquisition date, we have to charge the depreciation <laughs> and the remaining balance should be posted in the reporting date. Are you getting it? But mm. for your sake of easiness, in SBI, I have seen that there are plenty of times they are given adjustments based on land because we have enough calculations apart from this to consider there. So obviously they will give it more easy for you. Always it will be land. So there won't be much changes in the value. 
So the value will remain the same at the acquisition date and the reporting date. Sounds good. So that's exactly for the goodwill calculation. So have you got the new goodwill? Have you got the readjusted goodwill, guys? Anything else to be considered? So share consideration will increase by 4 million. Right? And net asset should be adjusted. And now when it comes to the last paragraph, we have missed something here. The finance director did not take into consideration of contingent cash. So I have done that. And it was not probable that would be paid. So ignore that line because it's already considered. And additionally, they measured NCI using proportionate approach despite the group having a public policy to measure the NCI at fair value. So how NCI should be calculated? Is it according to fair value approach or proportionate approach? Uh, what's the group policy? Fair value. Uh, the NCI should be calculated according to the? Fair value. Fair value approach. Right? So just tell me, how will you calculate the fair value here? So we know that the total number of shares of banana companies, how much? How much is the total number of shares? Just look at their equity side. Just look at their equity side. How much is the total number of shares? Is it 20 million? Each share is worth dollar one, right? So it will be 20 million. Run. This 20 million should be your total capital of your subsidiary, out of which 80 percentage is acquired by Venana. So how much will be the number of shares acquired by NCI? How much will be the number of shares acquired by NCI, guys? Can I reply in the chat? Yeah, it will be 16 million will be acquired by the parent and 4 million by the NCI. Isn't it? 20 percentage of 20 million will be 4 million, right? So we need to find the fair value of this 4 million shares. How will you find the fair value of this 4 million shares? 4 into 4.25, right? 4 into 4.25. So how much it is? How much it is 4 into 4.25? 17 million. So that's how you are going to get the new value of NCA. So instead of 14, the NCA should be removed and should increase by 3 million. Are you getting it? So where all these adjustments will reflect in FS in which all situations we should increase NCA by 3 million. Okay. And the impact will happen in the goodwill as well. Okay. So how much will be the increase in goodwill guys? So what is the net impact of goodwill? Shall we look at the total calculation? The total goodwill will be how much? So this is how we'll calculate the goodwill, right? The consideration by shares, 68. Fair value of contingent consideration, which is 4. Isn't it? Then NCA should be increased by 14 to 17. The net asset will be 75. And the new goodwill will be how much? 14. Yes. Is it clear, everyone? Can you replay in the chat? If you are using proportionate method, we would have taken 75 instead. Okay, Afla. If it is proportionate approach, that should be calculated based on 75, not 70. Okay. Is it done? So we have revised that knowledge part. I have said that another knowledge area will be with regards to impairment of goodwill. So in this question, they haven't tested the impairment part. Even in 2018, they haven't tested impairment part in September as well as in December, they haven't tested on the impairment. So let's look at 2019. 2019 also, they haven't tested the impairment part if I'm uh -huh. right part. So let's look at uh, this question. Here, the September, December 2019 question, there the impairment is happening here. Okay, let's look at the question. So just read this scenario, guys. Here we need to calculate goodwill as well as impairment needs to be considered. 
So there is question September, December 2019. That is again from the knowledge area basic group. Okay. So just note on that question. It is Luploid. Luploid. 2019. Sorry, is there any doubts? Ma Padikiva. So read the question, guys. Read it. The background and the first part, acquisition as well as impairment. Okay. And leave this part. Just quickly go through it. Just read the first half. These are your requirement. This is with respect to the fair value adjustment and the goodwill calculation. And we need to know the impairment impact. Okay. A and B is your requirement. So just quickly go through the question, guys.
Okay, so done, guys. Okay, so now when you're looking at the question part, here, first of all, we need to calculate the goodwill. So they haven't given the goodwill, we need to calculate it. So let, tell me what all needs to be included in the goodwill calculation. So first part is easy, right? They have given a cash consideration of 90 million. So do we need to consider it? First of all, we'll discuss it, okay? So 90 will be taken into consideration. It's easy as well. Then fair value of NC is given. How much it is? How much is the fair value of NCA? How much is the fair value of NCA, guys? 22. And fair value of identifiable net, net assets is 65, excluding the assets. So we have to consider the fair value of this asset. So I'll read the question. There is a land and property prices in the area has been increased significantly prior to July 2x4, that is before our acquisition. And nearby sites have been acquired and converted into residential use. And it is felt that the company's site will be converted into residential use. The factory site is currently market having a market value of 24 million. And 1 million of costs are estimated to estimated to demolish the factory and to obtain the plan permission for conversion. The question is was not intending to convert the site at the acquisition date and no sort of planning permission at the date. The depreciable replacement cost of the factory was correctly calculated as 17.4. So what should be the fair value of the land here? Is it 24 or 17.4? At what amount we will be showing the fair value of the land? Is it 24? So our knowledge from IFRS 13 needs to be applied here. Okay. So what is said in IFRS 13? So just note it down. We will just roughly revise that standard as well. So as per IFRS 13, when we are finding the fair value of known financial assets, such as land, buildings. Its fair value should be calculated as per highest and best use. Its fair value should be calculated on the basis of highest and best use. So that's the knowledge part we have to write here. Is it clear, everyone? So when we are considering this highest and best use, we know that especially with non-financial assets such as land, there will be some alternative uses. We can use it for residential purpose. We can use it for agriculture purpose. We can use it for commercial purpose, right? So there are different alternative uses. So out of which, which one will give you the highest and best use that should be considered as the fair value. Is it clear everyone? So when we are considering this alternative purpose and its best use, we should consider certain other factors. What are the three factors we need to consider? Do you remember guys? Because in SBR, it's not just the calculation like we are doing in SBFR. We have to understand the knowledge as well. We need to mention it in the answers. So what is the three factors we will consider when we are measuring the highest and best use? I don't know, anyone of you remember that three factors? We need to check that whether that land is or whether it is physically possible to convert it into that residential purpose, the physical possibility then. And financially it is feasible. Financially feasible, we need to check that fact financial feasibility and we need to check the legal rules as well, legally permissible or not, whether the legal permissions are there or not. So these are the three factors we need to consider while calculating the fair value of non-financial assets. Okay, that is financial feasibility, that is physically it is possible and legal permits. Is that clear? So if we do consider that part, what will be the fair value of this asset? What will be the fair value of this asset? Huh? What will be the fair value of this asset, guys? It should be 24 is the fair value, but there is a transaction cost as well. Right? 1 million will be required to demolish this factory and obtain the planning permission. So the net fair value of the land will be how much? It will be 20. Three. Is that clear, everyone? Can you reply in the chat? So, can I clear the goodwill now? Can I clear the goodwill? We have to consider the cash, the NCA part, along with the net assets, along with 65, we will include 23 as well. 
So how much will be the goodwill, guys? How much will be the goodwill here? Can you reply in the chat? How much is your total goodwill? So here we know that the cash is how much? How much was the cash? 90 million, right? Then the fair value of NCA, how much is the fair value of NCA? Is 22. Then fair value of net assets is 65. As per the books, it is 65. Along with that, we need to do a fair value adjustment as well with respect to land, which is how much? 23. Is that clear? So tell me how much is the goodwill now? Total considerations minus net assets. So the goodwill will be how much? The goodwill will be 24. Is that clear, everyone? Any doubts? Perfect. Now look at the impairment part. Look at the impairment portion. The Coalition Company incurred losses during the year 30 June to strike site. An impairment review was performed. The carrying amount of net assets of Coalition as follows, including fair value adjustment on acquisition, but excluding goodwill. They have not considered the goodwill part. The recoverable amount of asset is said to be 100, including in this assessment, assessment was a building owned by Colison, which was damaged in a storm and needs to be impaired by 4 million. Other lands and receivables are held at their recoverable amount. And none of the asset Colison, assets of Colison, including Woodville, have been impaired previously. So they does not have a policy of revaluing its assets as well. So when this impairment happens with a subsidiary, how will you treat that impairment? When there is an impairment happens with subsidiary, how will you treat that impairment, guys? Can you reply in the chat? Can you consider that subsidiary as a single asset? Can you consider that subsidiary as a single asset? No. So how will you consider it? We'll consider it as for yes, we'll consider it as a cash trading unit. Right? We'll consider it as a cash trading unit. So we need to understand that fact. It should be accounted as like a CGU. We'll consider it like a CGU. So we should remember the steps that you have followed in CGU. But when it comes to the requirement, we forgot one fact. Like apart from calculating goodwill on the fair value basis, they have asked you to calculate goodwill on the proportionate basis as well. So what's the difference when it comes to proportionate basis here? What will be the difference in the goodwill? If you're using proportionate basis, what will be the difference in the goodwill, guys? What will be the difference if you are using proportionate basis? Oh. So if you use the proportionate basis, then the goodwill should be recalculated, right? So let's see how it should be recalculated. So in that scenario, we know that the total net assets is 88. 
and here instead of taking the NCA at the fair value, we'll take the proportionate value for NCA. Right? The NCA will change. The NCA will change from 22, the NCA will change to 17.6. As a result, the goodwill should be recalculated and it will be 19.6. Instead of 24, the goodwill in this situation will become 19.6. Is that clear, everyone? Can you reply in the chat? Okay. So, here in the exam, you know, question, they have actually tested the impairment in both scenarios. We need to show the difference in the goodwill calculation depending upon how NCA interests are measured. We know the difference will be there because when the NCA is calculated using proportionate basis, the goodwill is only attributable to whom? In the proportionate basis, whatever the goodwill that you are calculated, this is only attributable to whom? Only for parent. So impact of impairment will only applicable for parent in proportionate basis. That's the difference, right? And what about here? In the first scenario, whatever the impairment happens to goodwill, that will get allocated between the parent and NCA because we have used the fair value basis. That's the main difference happening with respect to impairment. Is that clear, everyone? Can you reply in the chat? Yes. So now, now look at the impairment calculation. So what's the total impairment here? What's the total impairment here? Is it 6 million? Just look at the question. Is it only 6 million? They mentioned that intangibles other than goodwill is nine. How so? Have you included the goodwill here? Have you included the goodwill here? No. Right. We haven't included the goodwill portion. So we need to calculate the goodwill as well. We need to include the goodwill. No. So to calculate the subsidies total value of the asset, we have to consider the goodwill as well. So calculate the goodwill here. We already calculated the goodwill. Okay. So there is 23 and 19.6. There is 24 and 19.6. So let's look at how the goodwill should be calculated. In fair value model, we know it's 24 million. So as per the fair value model, how the impairment should be calculated. We'll look into that part. So along with that 60, 15 and 9, we'll include the Impairment of goodwill asset. So now tell me what will be the total assets value. Total value of assets including goodwill. Is it 106? Is it 106? No. It should be 130, right? Exactly. So now look at the calculation. So now do the calculation here. So we know that the land and buildings are there. How much is the value of land and buildings as per the books? How much is the value of land and buildings, guys? It's 60, isn't it? So it is 60 million. Then what about plant and missionary? What about plant and missionary? It is 15. Okay, they said that it's already in the recoverable amount. Then intangibles. Other than goodwill, how much it is? Nine. Then goodwill. According to the fair value basis, goodwill on the fair value basis, how much it is? 24 and current assets they are at 22 right so this is the carrying value the original carrying value of the books so we need to adjust for the impairment 
and we will find the recoverable amount of every assets. Isn't it? So tell me how much is the total now? As you already mentioned, I think it's 130, right? It's coming to 130. Yeah. So recoverable amount, we know that in total it should be how much? 100. The recoverable amount of the CG as a whole should be 100. So what will be the impairment, guys? Is it 6? No. The total impairment should be how much? Should be 30. Now the question is, how you are going to allocate this impairment to each of these assets? So tell me what's the rule? What should be a rule to allocate the impairment to CGU? To which one we should initially allocate it? First of all, we need to check whether any specific asset got impaired in the CGU, right? Any specific asset got impaired in the CGU. Have they given any such information in the question? Have you got any hint? which is mentioning that any specific assets in the group got in, impaired. Yes. They have mentioned that there is a building and there is a building in the CGU which is impaired by 4 million. So out of the total 30 million impairment, we will initially allocate 4 million to whom? We will allocate 4 million to land and buildings. Isn't it? All of you is it clear? Fine. So out of 30, we already allocated 4. So how much is remaining? How much is remaining out of 30 now? 26, right? So where will you charge it? Where will you charge it? We'll charge it to goodwill. Isn't it? We'll charge it to goodwill until goodwill will become zero. Until goodwill will become zero, we'll charge it to goodwill. So when it comes to the buildings, the recoverable amount is 56 and the goodwill will be written off to zero, right? Now, what about plant and missionary and the intangible asset? We know that out of total 30 impairment, we already allocated 28. So, how much is re re remaining here? How much is remaining? 2 million. 2 million is the impairment which is remaining, right? So, this 2 million should be allocated to whom? Should be allocated to both parent, to both plant and missionary and intangible asset on the proportionate of their weightage. So tell me how much is the total of land and machinery? 15 plus 20, 15 plus 9, it will become 24. So out of the total assets, we know that 15 will be attributable to, the weightage of 15 should be attributable to machinery. So I'll give that impairment there. So the impairment allocation should be out of 2 million, thereby 1.25 million will get allocated to plant and machinery according to the proportionate basis. Is that clear, everyone? Because together, these two assets will form, will be equivalent to 24 million. And we will weight, overall impairment should be allocated to these two assets on the base of their weightage. So out of 24, we know that the higher weightage is for machinery, which is 15. So 15 by 24 into 2. 1.25 will get allocated there. So obviously, the remaining impairment, out of 2 million, how much is remaining now? 1.25 million is already allocated. So how much is remaining? Yeah, exactly. The remaining amount is 0.75. So we'll allocate it to the other intangible assets. Fine. So we'll get the recoverable amount. We'll get the recoverable amounts. Right. So check whether the total comes up to 100. The current assets will remain at 22 itself. Now check whether the total comes up to 100. Yes. Right. So this is how the goodwill will be allocated in the fair value method. So if you're using the fair value basis, this is how the goodwill should be allocated. Is that clear? Yeah. So now when it comes to the proportionate approach, now when it comes to the proportionate approach, how will you calculate the impairment? What's the difference? When it comes to proportionate approach, we have to calculate the total goodwill. We know 
in proportionate approach the goodwill is how much how much was the goodwill i have shown earlier it was 19.6 no it was supposed to be 19.6 isn't it fine but this is only 80 percentage this is only 80 percentage in order to calculate the goodwill, we need to know how much should be the 100 percentage value of our subsidies goodwill. Because then only we can calculate the exciting impairment. Because the recoverable amount they have given 100, the recoverable amount of 100 they have given in the question, this considering the total value of the asset, the 100 percentage value of the assets in subsidiary. But if you take 90.6 million to calculate the impairment difference, then that won't be the exact comparison. So thereby, we need to gross up. We need to gross up the goodwill and find the notional goodwill as well. So how much is the notional goodwill, guys? How much will be the remaining 20% 20, 20 goodwill when you gross it up? The total goodwill should be... The total goodwill should be 19.6 into... We need to gross it up into 100 divided by 80. Is that clear? It will be 19.6 million into 100 divided by 80. So the total goodwill will rise up to 24.5. So how much is the national goodwill? How much is the national goodwill, guys? How much is the national goodwill? Which is 4.9. Is that clear? So 19.6 into 100 by 80. So this is the notional goodwill. So we need to consider this notional goodwill to calculate the impairment. Is that clear, guys? Can you reply in the chat? Yes, sir. Fine. So now, when we are calculating the impairment part, so first of all, we'll take the carrying value as same as before. So the only adjustment we have to keep keep here is the goodwill should be shown in two columns that is goodwill as per the proportionate approach proportionate goodwill is only how much 19.6 and there is national goodwill as well how much is the national goodwill 4.9 so, if you sum it up, your total assets is coming to how much now? The total assets is coming up to 130.5. So, now we'll compare it with the recoverable amount. How much is the recoverable amount, guys? Recoverable amount is 100. So, the difference amount is your impairment loss. Is that clear, everyone? Can you reply in the chat? Right? So, how much is the impairment loss? The difference is 130.5. So, we have to allocate this 30.5. So, how will you allocate it? So, we know that when you are allocating that impairment, initially, as we have seen earlier, we will allocate the 4 million to whom? Land and buildings. And remaining goodwill should be allocated to whom? We know this 19.6 million will get written off. The goodwill should be written off to zero. So that balance should be zero. And the same way, 4.9 also should be written off. So the balance amount should be again zero. And how much is the impairment left? Nine. 2 million. So we'll allocate in the same way. That is 2 into 15 divided by 24. The same as how we have done in previous calculation will allocate it on the same manner. And for current asset, there is no... Is that clear, everyone? So have you understood that difference? Can you reply in the chat? So this is another important knowledge area from basic groups area. Okay, that is impairment allocation. And we need to understand that whenever it's a 
proportionate approach, there is a chance that they will test the impairment as well. Because many students will forego the fact that we need to gross up the good bit and find the notional part. So this one is clear, everyone. Can you reply in the chat? And we need to mention that in the first scenario, the impairment should be allocated to parent and NCA. In second scenario, the impairment charge should be only allocated to parent. Is that clear, everyone? Fine. So these are the main areas we have to revise with respect to basic groups, that is proportionate approach and the impairment part. So now what less should be tested in SBR with respect to basic groups? So they are, can test something. Okay. So they will test you. The last step. So how will you calculate it? Huh? How will you calculate the joint arrangement situation? How will you calculate it? Which standard should be applied for joint arrangements? We can just roughly cover that knowledge. Yes, very good. We should cover that will get covered under IFRS 11, right? Under IFRS 11, there are two scenarios that is joint operations and joint arrangements. So just as a part of revision, I'm just mentioning those points. So if it is joint operations, what, what's the hint? What's the hint that will help us to understand that's a joint operation? Here, that investor will have a right to the shares, okay, right to the assets and liabilities of our company in joint operation. But when it comes to joint venture, the company will form a new company, okay. So let's say Vodafone and Idea have come together to form VA, right? And Hero and Honda have come together to form Hero Honda. So these are some of the examples of joint venture. So joint venture, they have a con joint control. So none of the entities will have a majority control here. So even if let's say Vodafone and Idea will have a joint control in VA. So in case of Vodafone, they will treat it as an associate itself. So for Vodafone, the investment in VA will be like an associate because they don't have a control but they can have a significant influence over the decision making by discussing with idea. Okay, so in the efforts of Vodafone and idea, VA will be account as a associate itself. So the treatment is similar to associate, that is, we'll follow equity method. So in the consolidated part, we will be following equity method for both situations, okay. So I have just given it as an example here. Is that clear everyone? So if we form a new entity and we have a joint or control over that entity, then that should be account as a joint venture. And the treatment is as in the consolidated efforts, we will be following equity method. And what about individual efforts? What about in the individual efforts of Vodafone and idea? What are the available options we have? Huh? The individual efforts. In the individual efforts, we can either show it at cost or as per IFRS 9, fair value through OCA or fair value through PNL or equity method. So these three options are available for Vodafone and idea in their individual efforts. Is that clear, everyone? Okay. So just make sure that you are aware about this knowledge part when it comes to the basic groups. Then apart from that, another area to be covered from basic groups is basically with respect to the business business test. So there will be some knowledge knowledge based questions on that on that area. There, the question will be asking you to consider whether it is a business or not. Okay, whether the acquisition is in a business combination or it, is it just an asset acquisition? So what are the different tests available for us? What are the different tests available for us to confirm that this just a asset, asset acquisition rather than a business combination? 
Huh? Do you remember that? Let's say you are acquiring a company and company have a set of house that is given for rent for their tenants. Apart from that, the company does not have any employees or anything like that. So I'm going to acquire that company. So in legal terms, I know this is like a business acquisition. But when it comes to the substance part, do you really think that it's a business? No, because we have simply acquired a set of investment property. Right? Because the whole value of that business is concentrated on that houses. Is it clear, everyone? So this is how we'll check whether is it a business combination or it is just a asset acquisition. So that knowledge part also should be revised from this area that will be given in your notes or even in the test book, it's there. Okay. So these are the three areas that you have to be concentrated. That is basic goodwill calculation and this impairment part. Then IFRS 11, that is joint operations. They can test you on joint venture on joint operations. And we have seen that multiple times they are testing this knowledge area. That is whether the acquisition is a business or not. Okay. So first of all, we need to check whether the value of that business is entirely concentrated on a similar type of assets. If that's a situation, then we will say that it is just an asset acquisition. It is not a business combination. Is that clear? So that should be covered under IFRS 3 itself. When you're learning IFRS 3, this knowledge should be also covered. Is that clear, everyone? So this part is clear, no? Any doubts? The basic groups? So we cannot ignore this area. So even though it's a knowledge part from FR, but still there's a higher chance of testing this one in SPR itself. We have seen multiple questions are testing on the same basis. Okay, so shall we move to the next part, the next knowledge area? Yes. So the next one will be with respect to change in group structure. The another next topic that you have to concentrate in SPR is change in group structure. That's a new additional part which is not covered in FR. So change in group structure. So how will you calculate the change in group structure, guys? So there are four different situations in change in group structure. That is, the entire structure of a group has been changed. So there are two scenarios. That is step acquisition as well as step disposal. There is step acquisition and step disposal. Right? So what is step acquisition, guys? What is step acquisition? That is, is a situation where the first one we learn it is not control to control. That is, we don't have a control, but acquiring some additional shares, we have reached in a situation where we got a control. So how will you deal with this situation? No control to control. How will you deal with the situation? I don't know if you can reply in the chat. How will you deal with it? No control means before the acquisition, before the acquisition of further shares, let's say the company was having 30% shares in a company. Okay, we are having 30% shares in a company. Now we have acquired additionally 40%. So the total shares is now become how much? 70%. So there is a change in the structure now. Okay, so from an associate, from an associate, the company have increased its shares to make it as your subsidiary. So if make it as your subsidiary, company have changed their overall structure. So how will you deal with this change in structure, guys? How will you deal with this change in structure? So we know that we have gained the control, no? So when we got the control from no control situation, the immediate thing you have to do is we need to calculate the goodwill. We will calculate the goodwill. So that's the requirement you have to do when there is a change in the group structure from no control to control as a result of additional chase acquisition. Okay. So unlike what we have seen in Luploid or in Banana questions, there we have initially acquired the company as a subsidiary itself. But there will be instances where the company will be initially acquiring a small percentage of shares. And further in the subsequent years, they will be becoming it, it's, they will make it as their subsidiary by acquiring additional shares. Okay. 
So how will you calculate goodwill in such situations? What will be the goodwill calculation formula? You haven't learned it. No one remembers that. Just reply in the chat, no? None of them have any idea on this part. Okay, so how you normally calculate goodwill consideration transferred plus NCA minus fair value of net assets. Okay, so present at the present situation, I have acquired how much? At the present situation in this scenario, I am acquiring 40 percentage, right? So first of all, I will consider the consideration of that 40 percentage. I have consideration of 40 percentage. So we'll write the amount for that. It will be given in the question. So apart from that, we know that we have already acquired 30 percentage in the past. We have already acquired 30 percentage in the past. So we'll consider the fair value of existing shares. We need to consider the fair value of that existing shareholding. It will be given in the question. So that is in this, according to our example, the 30 percentage. So that was your existing shareholding, right? So we'll measure the fair value of that 30 percentage and its fair value. Fine. So now along with that, we'll add the fair value of NC as well. We'll add the fair value of NC as well. Okay. Clear? Now, what else? Less fair value of net assets. We'll detect the fair value of net assets. So the only difference is while calculating the consideration along with the consideration that you have paid for the additional shares, we need to consider our existing shareholding as well. Fine. So as a result, finally, you will get the goodwill. So the calculation is almost the same. The only difference is we need to consider the fair value of our existing shareholding as well. So this is how we'll calculate the goodwill here when there's a change in growth structure that is from no control to control. Is that clear, everyone? Okay. So in the same way, let's there is a another situation that you have to deal with that is control to control situation. Control to control situation. So how will you deal with it? Control to control means let's say you have acquired 70 percentage already. Now we are becoming more greedy. So I just want to increase my shareholding. Okay. So as a parent company, I'm acquiring another 10 percent. So now I have a total 80 percentage in my hand. So I have how much 80 percentage with me. So this is like an increase in my ownership. So the structure has changed, but it's just a change happened within the equity itself, right? Because from NCA, we are acquiring additional 10 percentage. In reality, we are acquiring additional 10 percentage from NCA itself, right? Because we are holding 70 and NCA was holding 30. So when I'm acquiring additional 10 percentage from whom I'm acquiring it, I'm acquiring it from the NCA itself. Right? So it's literally a change happening within the equity itself. Are you getting it? Sounds good. So how will you deal that situation? You don't need to calculate goodwill, nothing in that part. We just need to pass the accounting entry there. So we know that we have acquired NCA. NCA have decreased by 10%. So NCA it is on the equity side. So when the NCA is getting decreased, will you debit it or credit it? When the equity is decreased, you debit it or credit it. Yes, debit. Debit, right. So, how much is the NCA balance decrease? We'll debit it. And we know that we have paid the cash for it. We have paid the cash for it. So, obviously, credit. Cash credit. And what about any excess balance? The excess amount will go to OCE, not to PNL, because it's just a movement happened within the equity. It is just a movement happened within the equity because it's not like a change that you have seen earlier. We are acquiring some shares from NCA itself. 
Is that clear, everyone? So these are the two simple scenarios. In a very simple manner, you can learn it. So step acquisition, two models are there. That is no control to control, control to control. Is that clear, everyone? Any doubts? So in control to control, we just understand that in simple manner, we are acquiring some additional shares from NCA. Okay. So we are having 70 percentage initially, we acquired additional 10 percentage. So from whom we are acquiring that 10 percentage, we are acquiring that 10 percentage from NCA itself. Are you getting it? We are acquiring that NCA's 10 percentage and that's how we gained our interest up to 80 percentage. Is that clear, Jane? So in that scenario, I have to reduce NCA because NCA is a balance with this in the equity. So when equity is decreased, equity balance are getting decreased, we need to debit it. So NCA's balance will get debited by 10 percentage and we have paid cash for it from the parents perspective. So credit cash and any balance amount will go to other components of equity. Perfect. All good. Sounds good, right? So that's a two scenario we have to deal under change in group structure in step acquisition. So now when it comes to step disposal, how will you deal it? Step disposal. Proceeds will come. Yeah, we will get the proceeds, right? So first of all, we'll learn in the reverse manner because now we have acquired 80 percentage. So from 80 percentage, let's say I'm disposing 20 percentage. I'm disposing 20 percentage. So did I did my control lost here? No. Did I lost my control? No. No. So from 80 it became 60, but you have still got the control in subsidiary. So there are step disposals which happens like this. So that is before and after disposal, we won't lose your control. So again, it's like a control to control scenario coming under step disposal. Okay. So how will you deal it? How will you deal it? Exactly as same what you have seen previously in the second method. So here the only difference is instead of acquiring that company NCA's value, here we have disposed it. So when you dispose it, you will get the cash. Or as it is mentioned by the student, we will get the sale proceeds. So we will get the cash. So when you get the cash, it is debit cash. Okay. And what about the credit? NCA will increase. NCA will increase. Uh, balance in OCH. Yes, balance will go to OCH. Perfect. So it's just the reversal happens here. Is it done? Step disposal, control to control scenario. Fine. So now when it comes to step disposal, control to no control. So control to no control means there is 60 percentage to from 60 percentage, let's say I'm losing my 50 percentage. I'm disposing 50 percent of the shares. Okay, so now I'm only left with how much? I'm left with 10 percentage. Right? So how will you deal that situation? How will you deal that situation? First of all, calculate goodwill. We already calculated goodwill, no? So in okay. that scenario, the goodwill will be already calculated. Okay. okay. So we just need to find the disposal profit or loss. We okay. just need to find the disposal profit and loss. Because we cannot expect a question where we have to calculate the goodwill and later on the company is getting disposed. So it will take so much of time. Okay. okay. The goodwill will be already calculated in such scenarios. So how will you calculate the goodwill here? Sorry, disposal gain or loss. First of all, we need to consider the sale proceeds. Okay. We'll check how much is the sale proceeds. So we know we have disposed 50 percentage. 
right? We have dispersed 50 percentage. And it is almost similar to how we find the goodwill here. The format is somewhat similar to this format. So it will be easy for you if you compare it and learn. So sale, sale proceeds we have considered, but it is only of how much? It's only of 50 percentage. And we need to consider the fair value of our remaining investment. So what is left with us? 10 percent. Yeah, we need to consider the fair value of that remaining investment. So it is coming up to how much? 10 percent. Right. So now I need to find the exact carrying value of the asset which is disposed, which is equal to the 60 percentage amount. Okay. So less fair value of net assets in subsidiary. That is, I need to know the 60 percentage value of the subsidiary. How will I find it? How will I find the 60 percentage value? Because the treatment is getting changed, right? We are removing that portion of subsidiary itself. So I need to remove the subsidiary from our groups. So I know that I'm left with 10 percentage, but I will come, I will consider that 10 percentage because I cannot include it as a subsidiary in, in the group. Okay, so how will you find the fair value of the net assets of subsidy which is equal to 60 percentage? We know the total, the 100 percentage will be fair value of net assets at disposal. And what else will be included to calculate the 100 percentage of this subsidy's asset? Because it's a subsidy, so we need to calculate the goodwill at disposal. Okay, so if we put together, we will put together if the fair value of the net assets at disposal plus goodwill at disposal, we'll get the 100 percentage of our subsidy. But do we need 100 percentage? Do we need the value of 100 percentage? No. No. Because we were initially having how much? We were only having 60 percentage taken subsidiary. So I need to know the fair value of that 60 percentage. So how will you find it? So from this 100 percentage, I will deduct. Uh, I will deduct a fair value of NCA because I know the remaining 60 percentage is with whom? Uh, NCA. So we'll calculate the fair value of NCA at this disposal date. Okay. So we'll find the total 100 percentage and from this 100 percentage we'll deduct the NCA's portion and that net amount will be get netted off. We'll find the net value of these two figures. So that will give you the 60 percentage fair value of our subsidiary. Is that clear everyone? Okay, so 60 percentage fair value of the sale proceeds will get compared with the 60 percentage net assets of our subsidiary. So when you compare this, you will get the group profit or loss on disposal. So have you understood the logic behind that formula? Is that clear, everyone? Just note it down. Do we need to discuss it again? Any doubts? Clear no? Fine. So these are the four different scenarios we have to dealt under change in group structure. Fine. So let's do the questions based on these areas. So we'll do the questions from latest situations itself. So let's take out the latest question from September, December 2022, and it is with respect to acquisition of birth hold. So initially they acquired 60, 40% of birth hold on January 2007, and further they acquired 35%. So is it a scenario of step acquisition or step disposal? Is it a scenario of step acquisition, right? So now reads the exhibit number one. 
read that exhibit number one. And what's the requirement here? Explain how it will be calculated, including in your calculation, the P&L. We need to find the impact on the P&L. And explain and show how the goodwill in Beth Hall would be calculated as well. So just read that exhibit number one, guys. Just read that exhibit number one. So here, the Sterling company paid 25 million for 40 percentage of Beth Hold, 10 million shares, okay? And first January to Sura XMN, when Beth Hold's retainings were 18. And the B company has no other resource. And Sterling company exercised significant influence of the Beth Hold financial and operating policy. So what does it mean by it? They have mentioned they have got a significant influence. So how will you treat that investment of 40 percentage? Will you treat it as a subsidiary or an associate? Will you treat it as a subsidiary or an associate? Associate. Associate, right? So what's the treatment for associate, guys? What's the treatment for associate? How will you treat the investment in associate? Equity method. Equity, equity method. So that is investment associate will be calculated as cost of associate plus share in profit. Share of profit of associate. Isn't it? And finally, you'll get the carrying value of that investment. So this is how the associate is getting treated. The cost of associate plus share of profit of associate. And finally, you will get the carrying value of investment. Okay. But in some cases, there will be some dividends that will be paid by associate to us. So that dividends received should be deducted as well. Okay. So this is the overall format. That is cost of associate plus share of profit of associate minus dividend received. Finally, you will get the carrying value of the investment. Fine. So just remember this format. So that will be useful for us. And now when it comes to this acquisition of associate here in late January 2007, 20 percent, 40 percent is what they have quit. How much is the cost? How much is the acquisition cost? It was 25 million, right? So just write 25 million here. It's coming to 25 million. Now, we'll find the share of profit of associate. So it is mentioned here that at 35 percentage, they further acquired the stake in associate when the fair value of the Bethold identified asset were 55.3 and the Bethold's retainings have increased to 42.3. So that, that will be the increase in profit, right? That will be the increase in profit. Because at acquisition time, they have mentioned that retaining balance was 18 million. And now towards the step acquisition time, that is mean that whatever the gap that I held there, during that gap, this is the increase in the earnings. That is from 18, it increased to 42.3. So can you say that that's a profit they have made, uh, created after the acquisition of that associate in the meantime? Isn't it? So how much is the difference? So they said that on the further acquisition date, the retaining balance was 42.3. Okay. So on the earlier date of acquisition as associate, the retaining balance was 18. So what's the difference? 
what is its difference how will you account for this difference guys that is a share of profit right so you'll be calculating the share of profit according to that difference so the latest amount is 42.3 and earlier it was 18 so on that difference how much is our share how much is your share in associate the share in associate is 40 percentage share in associate is 40 percentage and have they received any dividend during the meantime just check it are they receiving any dividends market price um, no they have mentioned any such dividends right 